service with today. Uh, first, we have uh, the buckets fun going on uh, through May 8th. Uh, we are collecting uh, funds for the Church World Service bucket, the disaster buckets. Uh, 
through the 8th of May, so that it's the next three weeks, including today. Uh, we are aiming to put together 30 buckets. Uh, we've been collecting the materials uh, in the room here. We just need to continue to support that financially. Uh, each bucket is going to cost approximately $100. Uh, if you feel moved to donate even half a bucket or uh, anything to that cause, uh, please mark your offerings buckets so that we may know that that is the purpose for your offer. And we thank you for your donations for that cause. These buckets, after we assemble them and send them out to the association, will be able to go to places where disaster strikes and assist them in fast cleanup so that they, they can therefore start the recovery efforts sooner. So it is a wonderful help to uh, all places where they are sent for disaster recovery. Also, if you know any graduates in your family or in our community who may be graduating in any form of school, uh, high school, college, graduate school, anything that may be out there, uh, please let us know so that we can celebrate and potentially uh, invite them to the picture if we can celebrate with them or we can just celebrate with them from the far. But uh, if you know of any graduates who are in our community, we'd love to be able to recognize them. Also, we, next week, uh, the 1st of May, we is going to be uh, Sarah Siegel will be in church. Some of you may know her. Uh, she is going to be offering to cut our hair uh, following the church service in uh, next week. So if you want to participate in that following the church, it uh, will be free will donation. The nation will be given to uh, support Ukraine, and if you would rather support her call, you may definitely do that. Let's let you know what policy that would be. So that would be great. Thank you. 
yes, there is a few little blue and then open our hands and open our hearts. So we might live as you would have us live. Our first scripture reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 27 to 32. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council, that is, the apostles. Teaching in the name of Jesus against their rules. And they stood before the council, the high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have killed Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostle answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him in his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Now a reading from Psalm 150. The last song in the book of Psalms. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud, flashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise. Never say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. This immediately follows the scripture reading that we read last week where we heard about the empty tomb. And the woman ran and told the disciples about the empty tomb. And the disciples did not believe that. So Peter ran and looked for himself. And now we read into the text where it says that we are now later that same day. So we'll read about what happened later that day. And then the text jumps forward. A week later, uh, which we will hear about midway through. Let us hear from John chapter 20, verses 19 31. When it was evening on that day, on the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. 
Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt what you need. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of Disciples told Jesus or told Thomas, We have seen the Lord. Thomas walks in, hears this, and shakes his head. No, you didn't. He says, I will not believe unless I see the marks of the nails of his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side. Thomas is a doubter. How can he do it you? Yes, Jesus did tell the disciples how everything would happen. He did tell the disciples that he would rise again in three days. But did any of them have any context for how that would happen? Did they really know what it meant to be Risen again. Even in the example of Lazarus, for example, it's still a very small example size. So they may have heard the prophecy. They may still not have known what to expect. We heard last week that all the disciples did not believe when Mary Magdalene and the others came running to tell them of the news. At least they did not believe until Peter himself had gone to the tomb to see the Lord. But all he saw was the empty tomb until the Lord appeared to him and to others later. Let me put it another way. If you walk into your kitchen in the morning and your wife or your husband or your kids or whoever is there with you explain to you, I have seen the Lord, what would your initial reaction be? Would it be, would you say that again? Or perhaps, wait, what did you say? Would you, or what would you mean by your response? Would you actually believe that the risen 
Christ has literally appeared there in your house. If you had not been there, see it. Would you be a skeptic? Perhaps now we understand why Thomas is He received a lot of criticism by commentators and scholars because, as Jesus himself later says to Thomas, because you have seen Blessed are those who have not seen again. We are all Thomases in that need to follow the resurrection. Thomas went around while all the disciples said how wonderful it was that they had seen the Lord. And Jesus made Thomas wait a whole week until he appeared to the disciples a second time. We have to wait a lot longer. So how do we find solace in the resurrection without a physically present risen life? First, as we have already noted, doubt is not surprising. Even Thomas had doubt, and he knew Jesus pretty well. Even the closest disciples of Jesus had trouble believing at times what Jesus was saying. When we do not have a physically present Lord, as Thomas and the rest of the disciples did, to resolve their doubt, it is understandable to have ours. We live in a world where we often say, I'll believe it when I see it. In this case, Jesus is asking us to believe more we see it. And that is an example of faith. It is, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, taking the first step even when you do not see the world's miracles. We can find solace in the resurrection without a physically present Lord, first by recognizing our circumstances and giving ourselves a little grace when we find a little bit of progress in each of us. Second, we can find our solace in the words that we that have been left behind for us to read. When we read history books, especially when they are written by primary sources, we, we do not usually doubt. A primary source is a source that is written by an eyewitness of the event. Secondary sources are slightly less reliable because they are a story of the events written by someone who did not actually witness the event that they are talking about. Written by someone who did not actually witness those events. In research projects, there is a significantly higher value placed on those primary sources because there is a lot less opportunity for the story to be twisted or misunderstood. We still have access to many primary resources on the Civil War as an example, including many, uh, many primary sources. None of us were witness to the events of the Civil War. But do any of us assume that these events were made up? The life and resurrection of Jesus are a little earlier than this, of course. But it is the same idea. We have plenty of primary sources who wrote down the Gospels. And we are given these Gospels as well as the letters which were written to the early churches as primary resources to give us an increased understanding about the mission and meaning of Jesus. 
even John ended his gospel by stating the purpose of writing. But these are written so that you may come to believe, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may be like his Even though the Lord may not seem physically present to us all the time, we can be confident that these words were written to share with others and future generations such as ourselves, so that we might be able to come to the Lord, so that we might be able to decrease our doubt and increase our faith. When you find yourself struggling in your faith, take some time to read the Bible. We are so blessed with the opportunity to have so many copies at our fingertips, a blessing that people feel sometimes, or even in Jesus' name, we might have. Third, in addition, signs and wonders recorded for us in time. We can also witness several signs and wonders today. Have you ever seen a sign or a wonder in hope that all of you have at some point, whether it be a sign or a wonder, I'm sure we can all confess to at least the wonder part of that state. The works of God are all around us. The beauty of a sunrise or a sunset in the scenery of the National Park, or just in the quiet of your backyard while you're watching animals interact with each other. Whether or not you have actually asked God for a sign, God often places them Through our own experiences of God, we can affirm our faith in the resurrection. Through our own experiences of God's wonder and God's Perhaps you were praying about an opportunity before you, and a friend then suggested that you should take it. Or maybe you were thinking about a, or thinking about traveling to a particular place. And then you picked up a book that just happened to mention that place. Or perhaps you have witnessed the presence of Jesus yourself by being healed when you were not expecting. Perhaps someone prayed over you as Jesus would and as his disciples did, and you were healed. We do not all experience the same kind of wonder and things do not always go the way we want. But we can all experience some kind of wonder as a testimony to Christ's presence in our lives. We can all experience some kind of wonder as a testimony to Christ's presence in our lives. Whatever that wonder Whether you did not receive one particular one, you may receive another that can show Christ's presence. We only need to be open to seeing some things as God's sign, as God's wonder, God's work, and not always talking things up to circumstance, but to incidents. As a thing is not open. You may not feel right now that you can tell somebody else, I have seen the Lord. But consider, have you seen the face of the Lord in someone else? Can you see the face of Jesus in the face of a person who cares for you, who forgives you, or even who you have helped 
as long as we bear the title of Christian, we are the face of the Lord here on this earth to others. We are the physical presence of Christ today because according to Galatians 2 verse 20, Christ lives in us. Just like you are the face of a company if you go on a trip to represent the company somewhere else, we are also the face of Jesus here representing the brand elsewhere. If you drive a truck or a car with your company logo uh, emblazoned on the side of it, you are also driving, uh, representing that company, that business, that's business. But uh, we are doing the same thing as Christians when we are branding the name of Christian. And through our action and through our words, we can help someone else to say, we have the Lord. Hopefully, that we have seen the Lord is in a positive way and not a negative way, because we are taking care to represent that place. And in the same way, we can in our own way say that we have seen the Lord when we see other people around us representing that same faith for us, especially when we are the ones who need a helping hand or a little encouragement, a little help along the way. When you are down, perhaps because you cannot feel the Lord as the disciples couldn't for a while. And as Thomas still couldn't feel the Lord for a week more, you can still see the patience of someone else meets you in that moment, just as they take the time to listen or to be with you, or to lend you that word of encouragement, or to lend you that help. I highly doubt that the other disciples taunted Thomas about seeing the Lord. And they have talked about it a lot, but they still loved Thomas. And I am sure that they understood his doubts, having just had them themselves. Therefore, while Thomas was still waiting to see the Lord, while he did not have confidence in the risen physical Lord, they still helped him see the face of God by being kind to him, by showing him. The early disciples are a model for our for good Christian living. The text of the Bible is crucial for this as well. We can feel comforted about the doubts that we read which they felt, and we can also feel encouraged by the work that they are able to do to surpass those feelings and those fears. For if we are able, or if the disciples are able to surpass those feelings and fears even amid their doubts, that must mean that we surpass those doubts and fears just as they do. As we read in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, as an example, we read about how Peter and the apostles answered the high priest, giving them orders not to preach in the name of Jesus. We must obey God rather than any human authority, they said. We too first obey God. We too must obey God. And we obey God more than any human authority when they contradict each other. And to obey God confidently and consistently as they did, even in the face of persecution or potential persecution, we must address our own roadblocks, which may include doubt. We must read the Bible which was written to help us believe 
and we must be open to God's action shown to us and by us in our own lives. To obey God confidently and consistently, we must first address our own roadblocks with many increased doubt. We must second read the Bible which was written to help us believe. And third, we must be open to God's action shown to us and by us in our own lives. These three things can give us solace in the resurrection without a physically present form. All of our accounts, we will bring to help us believe and be open to God's action to us and by us. Today we have seen the faith and doubt of the disciples in the week following the resurrection. They did not believe until they saw the tomb themselves. Last week we read about Peter physically going to the tomb before he believed the news that the woman shared with him. And this week we read about Thomas not believing in the resurrected Lord until he could touch the bone in his side. But when they all saw, they believed. We are then told that we do not need to see to believe. We can have faith anyway. John chapter 20, verse 29. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. That coming to believe signifies that we Expected to do it all at once, but we are coming to do it. It is a work in progress throughout all our Christian lives. Now we can use the experience of the disciples and even have more faith in what we have seen than they did. Now that we have learned from the faith and doubt of the disciples, we can address our own beliefs when we find it a struggle during the always tumultuous times that we live. We will move forward in this struggle next week. But first, meet this challenge, this discovery or wonder in your life. A person, place, or thing where you can see the face of the Lord and can truly explain, I have seen the Lord. May all glory and honor be to God. Thanks be to God. As we explain that we have seen the Lord, we also, in seeing the Lord, not help but rejoice in the name of Jesus. There surely is something about that name. Let us sing together the song, There is Something About That Name, found in our Green Book, number 108. We'll sing this refrain twice.
and set us free. But we are locked behind our doubts and fears, pass through our barricades, open our hearts, and give us peace. Grant your spirit as a transforming power among us that inspires and enables our service so that your transformative presence might be known in our world. Amen. You may be seated. We come to our time of joys and concerns today. Uh, first, I'd like to celebrate a few joys, a couple that uh, were this previous week. Happy birthday to Evan Turner and Adam Clark. Birthday to both of you. Also, uh, this week we wish a happy birthday to Michael Shumway and James Good. Happy birthday. Joyous occasions. Uh, updates to our prayer list. Many of you know that uh, Bob Homan has been in the hospital this week uh, and uh, he is now, as you understand, he's out of hospital. Uh, he will be trans he's currently. Uh, in uh, Norwalk, we have we will be going to the Willows, I uh, believe, today. Uh, so he, will, he is doing much better. He's on cardiac and cardiac issue at the moment as well. So he has a, a road to recovery through rehab, and he only was for a few weeks, but uh, we hope to get back and back on his as he as he is always himself, not in the future. So we ask for your specific uh, prayers to be here to the others. We will be here to the and we hope that it is smooth. Any other updates or requests that you'd like to share with us? Christ our Lord, risen from the dead, come and enter into the darkness of our doubt and despair with the bright light of your presence, that we may put our trust in you and in the power of your resurrection, that we may rejoice in you, the risen Lord, our Savior, who lives and reigns with Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, the world without. Lord our God, we pray that we may see you through faith. In seeing you, we will begin to know you. In knowing you, we will give ourselves in God to you. And in loving you, we will enjoy your presence forever. We thank you for all who have shared their vision and insights, for all who have shared their awareness and love for you. We pray for all who seek to proclaim the good news of the gospel. May all who are involved in ministry and all forms of ministry reveal your love and your saving power. We also remember all who are new to the faith and the newly baptized, and all who are secreters and those who do not know of your love. May awareness of you and your love come to them, cause them to celebrate your joyous resurrection. We pray for leaders of nations and governments, for all in authority, that they may be wise and gentle in their things, that they may be caring and respectful of others. We pray for those seeking to rescue the poor and any who are in danger. We pray for emergency services and all who risk their lives for others. We ask that we may come to know your presence and power in our lives, in our homes, and in our neighbors. The Spirit, Lord, we ask for our home.
pray for home when there is strain and stress at this time, for families who have lost loved ones who have been betrayed and loved, that we may all know of your love and care for us. Jesus, may you call among us in your prison. God, we pray specifically for those among us who need your loving embrace this morning and your healing touch. Bob Bowman, Judy Boyer, Shirley Brooks, Bill Carroll, Shirley Gibb, Mike Ingram, Kay <coughs> Jackson, Bob Kegley, Don Ingram, Jack Lennon, Dorothy Sheck, John Shumway, Eric Smith, Leola Zeeble, Edda Meisner, and Roger.
bless you and keep you, and the love of God shine his darkness upon you and grant you.